Welcome to For F1's Sake, you fucking shits. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. We can't, we can't, you can't swear. I know you're under pressure, mm -hmm. but they will have none of that, please. Think of the children. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Welcome to For F1's Sake. We did it. We outlasted Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, this episode hasn't gone out yet. <laughs> Let's not count our chickens. <laughs> There's still time for it all to come crashing down. Oh, guys, guys, there's a problem. I've only got two chickens here. There should be three. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For F1's Sake. Liam Lawson licked a lime-lined lead lollipop. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yes! And a t-shirt, I think. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a t-shirt a month, won't we? <laughs> You've got about ten to catch up on. <laughs> Welcome to For F1's Sake. As patronising as a fastest lap and a driver of the day vote. Oh, it's like an honorary Oscar, isn't it? Not Piastri. The film thing. I'd be an honorary Oscar Piastri. <laughs> Shoot that woman through a door. <laughs> For lifetime achievement. <laughs> Welcome to For F Y. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For F One's sake. In tribute, we will not be drinking out of our shoes tonight because that's disgusting. It was always disgusting. It was never a good idea. I don't think we ever liked it, did we? Or did no, we? we never liked it. I can't it, remember. Like, isn't it a funny thing of this glorious period where we were egging Daniel Ricardo on to drink from his shoe and then he never got to drink from his shoe again? It's like a tragedy, isn't it? <laughs> there was a point where he drank from his shoe for the very last time. Welcome to For F1's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Pete and it's October and the nights are getting longer, but Daniel Ricardo's career has become a shorter, so he's dead to us now. But long live Liam Lawson and the New Zealand national anthem that we'll all know by heart very soon, probably. Let's talk about whatever the heck has been happening in F1 over the past month and realise what we've already forgotten about. That's all to come. Joining me is Phil Tromans. All right. Hello. And beside him is Terry Saunders. All right. And that's enough about them and their boring lives. We've got a whole month of F1 to catch up on, so let's get some hot takes. Hot takes, hot takes. Come and get your hot takes. Oh, careful, they're hot. Oh, can I take one of these takes? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shitting hell! No, genuinely burn myself. Fuck. Ow, no, it really hurts. <laughs> There should be a sign up or something. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna just take. Trouble. I'm take. Sorry, I'm taking that, and that's just <laughs> going to be the end because <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, Phil, come on. What's uh, Phil? Phil, Sal, Phil. <laughs> what's Sal? Your, <laughs> Sal, Phil. What's your hot take, Phil? So Summer. I was watching Formula One, <laughs> and. <laughs> You're all very good at this. <laughs> you can do no, it. We're an American podcast now. Um, my hot take yeah, this week mm. is that Burnt Mylander is dead, but no one's talking about it. Have you got a bubble in your throat? Don't think so. Oh, Hang on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <sighs> my hot take this month is that Burnt Mylander is dead, but nobody's talking about it. Ooh. Because when was the last time you saw a safety car? Wasn't it when the safety car crashed? No, well, actually, yeah, that kind of knackers my entire thing. Um, no, because that's when he died. That, yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, <laughs> but, but there hadn't been he... a safety car since Spain, and that's what I was going for. Oh, it's like sorry. nine races without a safety car now. Really? Yeah. And, I, and I, I haven't been able to independently verify this, but also, I think in the last race, there were no yellow flags. It did. Um, for the Singa which is insane. For a Singapore Grand Prix where there's been a safety car every year since every year. forever. Well, since whenever it started. Yeah. Surely this was going to be the one where there was going to be one. And there was that point right near the end of the race where you're like, well, nothing. what happens if there isn't? Yeah. No, nothing. nothing. Those worry. poor marshals, they've trained for nothing. They've probably been flown in from Silverstone for nothing. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, he's not really dead. It burnt, it no, he's not. I, I was just checking his uh, Instagram as well to see what he's up to. And it's, his, his latest post is, uh, driving basics, stay safe this fall. <laughs> it's not American. What's that about? Yeah, I know. It's just it's he German. crashed. It's like, come on. Um, but yeah, his. Uh, what's going on? Why? Why are there no safety cars? What's happening? Did all cars the drivers are too good? Get, all the are the drivers too good? No, the cars well, no, are too there's good. Been, there's been crashes, haven't there? Yeah, but no, maybe the cars We've are just getting to, too good. They're too sticky. Since, they they don't crash enough. Yeah, but it's before they got rid of Logan Sargent. Hmm. Lance Stroll's still in it. 
Surely I mean, there people was, are crashing. What's there happening? was the big crash at the end of the Azerbaijan one when Sainz and Perez took each other out, but that only went to a virtual safety car, so it was a virtual bird my lander. This is it. It's itself. just like this the hologram version, like he's fucking Tupac or something. Fucking Abba. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is Oh no, there's been a major crash. There's carbon fiber everywhere. Here come Benny and Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> We are the dancing queen. And that's it. I was going to sing an ABBA song and I couldn't think of any, but yeah. Um, I just thought, I thought it was interesting. Well, mm. I, I couldn't, I did a very, very brief bit of Googling earlier today because I've been very busy, but, and I was trying to work out what's the longest gap since safety cars were introduced where there hasn't been a safety car. Yeah. And um, the answer is, I don't know. But if you know, oh. uh, write in, wrong at ff1s.com. Very <laughs> I mean, informative. Don't. So how many races has it been without a Nine. Decision? Without one? Yeah, we still haven't had one. Could be ten in the next one. There's That's none bad. in, when are we next? Austin, is it next? Austin. Yeah. It Austin. is weird. It is weird. Yeah, I think maybe the cars are just getting too too good. Um, Terry, how about you? What's your hot take? What's your hot take? So- Fuck, my hot take is that <laughs> fucking Max Verstappen is my fucking hero and I won't hear another counting <laughs> word about it. Oh. <laughs> He always has been, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've always liked Max Verstappen, as yeah. long-term listeners will know. And now there's been this very strange uh, snafu with the FIA, where old head of the FIA, whose name is... Mohammed Ben Sulaim. Oh, that's close. Um, 14-time Middle Eastern rally champion. He said there's too much swearing on the radio, and we don't want people, at his words, swearing like rappers. <laughs> <laughs> To which Lewis Hamilton said, uh, mate, that's a bit racist. And he said, <laughs> and then Max Verstappen was told basically to stop swearing. And then in the interview after the race, I think oh, he, was he was done more than told to stop swearing. He swore once and got community service for it. They didn't just say, Max, could you not swear? They were like, right, community service. Hang what's on. community service? Yeah, what's one like, I don't know. He had to go and sort of look at the F1 Academy mechanics or something. Sweep I don't the pit know. lane. Yeah. yeah. I hope he has to wear like an orange <laughs> his jacket. Yeah. To go Litter clean up picking some the stands. He has to go and wipe off the Bernie says don't drink and drive signs. No, he's got all. He's, they're, he's, they're all chained together with a pickaxe. <laughs> How do you chain someone with a pickaxe? The comma. Yep. Oh. Chain <laughs> together, comma. With a pickaxe. Yes, yeah. That, that, that's less community service, though, isn't it? I mean, that's like... That's, that, I mean, that's, chain gang, that's a chain gang. <laughs> that's a chain gang. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that, but but yeah, he's your um, hero now, because he likes to swear. Oh, yeah, well, well we should... Uh, sorry, I interrupted your story, Terry, because, yeah, he was given this sort of slight slap on the wrist and responded. Yeah, so then he did this uh, very non-communicative interview after the race where he was just like, well, if I can't swear, I'm not going to say anything. And then, even better, after that, he then had like a, apparently a really lovely chat with all the journalists afterwards, and just being very erudite and everything. And I don't know, I don't know what's happened this year, apart from the George. Oh no, I don't even hate George Russell. I do. Why it's Lando Norris? God, you can't keep up. It's with happening myself. so fast, you can't keep track of who you like. <laughs> but Max Verstappen, like all drivers that I hated, has mellowed into some kind of slightly entertaining, grumpy man, which is always my favourite. And he's now become. Uh, a, a friend of mine I say friend never met him I just think we'd get on as long as he never googles the stuff I've said about him <laughs> and you never look into his past <laughs> um, yeah it's interesting isn't it you know, some maybe, things change but they're still the same but also it, they change is it because he's entering that sort of I don't give a fuck anymore kind of well, stage he's now of his earned, career yeah I think he's earned the right to not give a fuck yeah I think when you're a uh, some how many I can't it's so controversial I can't remember how many world championships he actually have it's three or four I think <clears throat> I think three or was it two or four I don't know. it's some he's some. anyway he's good enough that he can now go no fuck you I won't do what you tell me to quote a band um, and uh, yeah I I quite like it because if you know Lance Stroll tried to do that or Franco Colapinto was like that nobody would listen to him but Max Verstappen has got some gravitas. And he can sort of take a stand. And also, it's such a strange thing because, like, trying to stop swearing in this age just feels, it's just feels so archaic. It's like Mary Whitehouse. I want more of it. Yeah, and it's also like, it's like the, they do beep the swears. It's not like, mm. <laughs> it's just like, 
Do you know, I, it, 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 is ma- it is mad in this day and age. I, I used to work on local radio, right, for the BBC, and I got told once by the station editor that if a guest says the word, swears on, on air, you have to turn down their microphone and, and then apologise to the audience and basically then tell them that they can't do that again Play and i said okay album. what like what what word like i was thinking fuck or shit or all those kinds of things and uh bloody was the entry level oh I so well on, lo- on local radio i can understand that imagine sort of... yeah but imagine someone talking about i don't know cancer and just saying and it was really bloody awful when we lost our mum. Oh, oh sorry, going to have to dip I'd you down there. I'd just like to uh, really, <laughs> apologise to anyone who might have been offended by uh, Ollie's all. fruity language there. Yeah. So anyway, you're dead, mum. Uh, you know, so <laughs> it's just, I, it is mad. It's like, it's just part of our vocab. And if you find it offensive, fuck you, you fucking fuckers. Yeah. It is. I remember. And of all the things that the FIA should be clamping down. A. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and also, even if you work, yeah, I... Uh, I think it would be fine to say, guys, look, could you just, in the future, just be a bit careful. This goes out all over the place. Could you just not swear, please? That'd be great. Just in the press conferences, they're fine. The cars, you know, that's fine because it's selectively beeped out and taken and we'll have a word with the broadcasters. But well, instead, the, they just the went... The cars swear it. <laughs> well, the cars, I mean, they probably do. Um, but for them to just go straight in and just go, First up and you've swore! Now you have to paint some floors! Or whatever it is they've done yeah. to him. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's got. I just remembered. On. I remembered. I had a job doing like admin and filing for. I think it was University College London UCL, and I got called into the manager's office one day because <clears> I'd done uh, a bunch of letters to be printed to be sent out to all the alumni or something. And when I'd written Yorkshire, apparently I'd written Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> And this woman was just like, did you do this on purpose? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I wish I thought of it, but no. So fucking, the R is next to the T on a computer key- keyboard. And it's 1997. <laughs> I once had a similar issue when I was, working for a, I was working for a newspaper and I sent an email inquiring about a story or something or responding to a press release or something to a local, um, uh, local charity that helped out the uh, like people who were... I don't even know what the political cap term is, like differently abled people, people with learning difficulties. Ooh, Phil. Um, oh, you and mean... When I, um, and when I wrote kind regards... Um, stroll. <laughs> I wrote kind regards on the email, and it was only after I sent it that I realised <laughs> that, <laughs> that the T <laughs> is just above the G on the keyboard. Kinky retards. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to phone up and be incredibly appalled. Luckily, they were very nice about it. Because they, so they were. They were. They really were. Kind <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh it's dear! Quite embarrassing. Oh, that was that does sound embarrassing. Anyway, can that's I say the kind this, of thing that Max Verstappen wouldn't do. This yeah. is my opinion that will get me cancelled. So we can. Maybe <laughs> Which one? Not There's use so this. many. But of all the words that we can't use anymore, <laughs> that's my favourite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that wasn't the one I thought you were going to say. No, oh. Knowing you as I do, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 whoa. What does that mean? Well, you know, you moved to Germany. Started dressing really it's nicely I, because I had to. <laughs> Uh, it's the only place you accepted. I'm, I'm intrigued to know how much of this is going to stay in. We'll see. Uh, just all of it. We'll keep it. <laughs> Ollie, you, <laughs> for the love of God, you must have a hot take that will get us out of this mess. Yeah, it's not as uh, delicate as any of those ones that feel like I'm going to get cancelled for saying it. I think that now Daniel Ricciardo's gone, he's going to become one of the most successful celebrity brands of all time. No. No, I, I think disagree, he, actually. No, he we'll he have has, forgotten about him in six months. Has, no, I don't think so. I think he's, well, he's already got his own wine, right? Was it DR3? Yeah, every fucker's got their own no, wine. No, I know, I know this. I Do you still this. remember Yano Trulli? No. No, well, no. But, but Daniel Ricciardo is slightly different. Okay? Francis Ford And Coppola. I think he, he just seems like a brands will be all over him. I think it might just... It, it just it's just going to fly and become... No. That, that was the thing. No. Helmet Marco, old Helmet Man, he was saying that he wants him as an ambassador for Red Bull as well. Like to sort of keep him on as like a mascot. I don't know what they're going to do with him. Like put a bigger version of his head on his head or something. He should be. You know um, how we fucked you over. Would you like to stay with us? <laughs> he should be the ambassador for when you've drunk too much Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he is. I think, look, if if Lloyd Grossman can have pasta sauces, right? I think Daniel don't Ricard- compare Lloyd Grossman <laughs> to Daniel Ricciardo, right? Lloyd Grossman invented MasterChef, right? 
Yeah. It's now a massive thing. He invented mm. it. Yeah. There was the Vic Reeve sketch about it, which is amazing. <laughs> yes. Daniel Ricardo is thick as pig shit, and now he has the stench of death and loser about him. Like, yeah. what brand is going to want to get associated by going, hey, do, yeah, yeah, you know that we had, um, well, we couldn't use Tiger Woods anymore because of all that. Oh, let's go for, oh, oh I know, Daniel Ricardo. Oh, no. Do you want to sell some Gillette? All right. Oh, shit, I cut myself shaving. Oh, because I'm fucking rubbish. <laughs> Uh, also, and this is a complete coincidence. I bought some beer today because I wanted to have a drink. And look at the look at the beer. Badger. 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 That's not, not, complete... not honey badger, though, is it? No, it's not. But it's orange. Does sure. It taste, does it taste very bitter? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like. I honestly beer. think he's going. You know, it's going to be one of those things. that's like, do you remember that? Was that guy? No, I think he'll be hugely famous in Australia because they haven't got any. Oh, stuff. in Australia, yeah, that's fine. So you're like you'll go to Australia in ten years on a holiday, and there'll just be like huge posters of Ricardo. You know, like they had Saddam Hussein pictures up in Iraq. Like they'd be like that. And they'll just. Be... <laughs> I, 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 I'll give you an example, right? This is what I think is going to happen. Okay, so I've said most successful celebrity brands of all time, but but maybe not like the Beckhams or whatever. I don't think it's be like, oh, it's the Ricardos. But have you ever heard of somebody called Travis Barker? Yeah, from Blink One Eighty Two. Blink yeah, no, no, no. The uh, Robert De Niro character in Taxi Driver. No, the Blink One Eight Two drummer. Now, Travis Barker, nobody fucking knew who Travis Barker is. They don't, not many people know who he is. They still don't know. But he's like, he's fucking everywhere and he's married to a Kardashian. Is like, he? I, yeah. Like, I well, just. I know think, who he is because he's the drummer from Blink 182. Yeah, I didn't but know this who is he's married point. to Kardashian. I think, I just think Daniel Ricardo is going to fall into that world of, I don't know, fucking Love Island esque reality, big celebrity. I mean, he might, but I mean, again, in, in my world, that, I, that doesn't register on my radar, but I realise I'm in the minority, but. I think he's going to be like the equivalent of like Chico time. It's like, oh yeah, do you remember that? <laughs> that was funny Yes, for a bit. he'll have his own single as well. He'll release a single, yeah. oh, be and it'll last that. six months, yeah. and then it'll Th- be gone. No, and then actually, and then... actually, I'm up for his Kylie slash Jason slash Craig McLaughlin style Australian single. Then he'll no, have he... a cameo. Then he'll have a cameo. Don't make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll get on a... neighbours. He'll be like in Hangover Five, a cameo in that, and yeah. then he'll start getting into Hollywood. I'm telling you now. Ten He'll years be time, president of the USA. He will be president of the United States of America. Anyway, it's a hot take. You know, it doesn't have to be right. I'm being well up for him because Toadie's just left Neighbours, so I think there's a gap there for a, like a lovable idiot. <laughs> oh, Ricardo as Toadie would be amazing. They're quite That'd similar, be brilliant. They'd have to call him like I don't know, Froggy or something. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's getting beat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be funny, but... Make it worse. Don't say it again. <laughs> I, can, I can keep the first one in. I don't think with you a, can. With a beep, with a beep, I yeah. can. I can't keep the voices in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dear Lord. <laughs> anyway... Oh, he's getting I've had excited. a stressful week. He's getting, yeah, yeah, you can see. Right, now uh, that's out of the way. We can finally say hello, Phil. Thank fuck. Uh, what have you been up to this past month? Oh, well, it's, I've had a month. Um, oh, oh, have you? So, you know when you get deported from a country? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I yeah, do. well, so do I now. Uh-oh, oh, where are you deported from? I'm slightly laying it on thick. I nearly got deported from a country. <gasps> Which country? Uh, this week, Scotland. in fact. Uh, Denmark. Uh, no go on tell so, me was it because of Kevin Magnusson <laughs> so I used to travel a lot with work like most weeks I'd be jetting off to somewhere it was all very glamorous I remember yeah. early um, days of the podcast you'd always be in Frankfurt or somewhere. Yeah, I'd, I'd just always be in Frankfurt yeah that's the end <laughs> but, um, but that doesn't happen much so basically since Brexit or before since I had a child I've not travelled that much because it, uh, it's difficult um, but this week, I I did get to travel. I went to I went to Denmark to drive a new car, um, and it's only about the third time this year I think I've been abroad. Um, and so went to the airport. Off we went. Flew, fine. Landed, queuing up in the long line because thank you Brexit. Um, got to the lady at the the thing, gave her my passport, and um, she said, mm, "There's a problem." I was like, "What?" She said, "Your passport has to be." 10 years old or less I was like right but it's it's still valid for another year she's like yeah but it was it was issued more than 10 years ago I was like right it turns out and apparently this is a big thing but I somehow completely missed it that your 
passport to get into a Schengen country, i.e. the EU, yes. needs to be 10 years old or less. <gasps> and mine was older. Oh, now, shit. the funny thing is, I'd been to France... <laughs> I'd been to France like two weeks previously and it hadn't been a problem at all because it, it was over 10 years by about a month. Also, um, the French were probably like... Oof, yeah, so yeah, no, they didn't care or check, but the Danish were a lot more thorough. Um, and so I had to basically wait in an area for people who looked like they were about to be deported. Um, oh. Did they? Probably were, uh, while they checked all this stuff. And eventually, a very, a very large but very nice man came and said, look, we're going to let you in. Because my supervisor is very nice. I said, he is very nice. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And they let me in. I was only there for a day. And I was like, the following day, I came back and they said, right, when you go back, you have to go to the airport. And you have to go to the border police instead of a normal border control. And they, you have to get them to let you out. So this is yesterday. Last, yesterday evening, in fact, as we record this, I went back to the airport, got there four hours before my flight and went oh, to the border police God. and said, look, I, I, I've got this problem with my passport. Um, they let me in yesterday, but they said I should come and see you when I want to when I want to leave. And he looked at my passport and said, "We shouldn't have let you in." <laughs> and he really? let me out. But he said uh, because you know I I don't I don't want to keep you here. So now you know I'm going to let you out. But um, that's oh. the end of the story. Really, kind of fizzles out. But wow. there there was a good I would say half an hour when I was like, "Fuck, I'm going to get put on the next flight home," and they won't let me into Denmark. What and happened? I might be banned from Europe forever. Here's a question then. So let's say you did get put on the next flight home. Who pays for it? I, that I don't know. I was, well, I I was know literally the wondering that as I was sitting there. Oh, oh do I, you? I do know the answer to this question. The answer is the airline, right? So the reason Ooh. is, so oh, I used to work. In. When I left school, I worked for British Airways. And uh, I, uh, so I learned this stuff. And um, I once sent somebody, I say sent somebody, but somebody was checking in. Uh, going to Argentina, I think on an Australian passport. But there's some complexities with it, like you need a certain visa for some passports, but not. And normally Australia and US and UK are very similar. Anyway, I sent him. This is a long flight, right? I, I, I think it's like 12 hours or something. He got there and got sent straight back home <laughs> because I didn't check his passport properly. And we Ooh. got charged as the airline got charged. So then I got called into the office and was like, yeah, you can't do that again. Three strikes and you're out. All right? don't, don't he was going to Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah. It's, happen yeah. It's, actually, it's, it's happened to a friend of mine who got to America and was going there to do some work, but he had the wrong visa and they wouldn't let him in. And they, yeah. Yeah, they put him straight on the flight back. So again. the airline will get charged because it's their responsibility. Ouch. All right. Well, thankfully, that didn't happen, but I was wondering that very, that very question. So if you are going to Europe and you have a passport that is still perfectly valid, apparently it doesn't expire until next year, but was issued more than 10 years ago, um, you can't use it. So yeah, travel advice from Check that before you go on holiday, yeah. unless you're going to France, in which case apparently it's fine. Boff, <laughs> boff, <laughs> ah, we don't care. I use, yeah, stupid English. Uh, uh, what about you, Terry? How's uh, how's your week been? Or the last month actually? It's been. I mean, I've been a bit ill. I think I've oh. had shingles. Oh, Oof. you think? Is that why you have on your roof? You know. Well, I've had shingles before, and I definitely knew. Then, I think you've talked about it on the podcast. Probably. I think it was about it was before I left for Germany. That's why I left. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not staying in this fucking country. Fuck you, shingles. shingles. <laughs> and I had this kind of, I thought it was like a heat rash sort of thing. And I was feeling really ill. And then I realized the rash is in a very specific line around my body. And I suddenly remembered, fuck, that's shingles. Because it's like it, the rash is around a nerve or something. Mm. And I kept saying to everyone, oh, I think cause apparently I had chicken pox really bad when I was a child. And um, it's a chicken pox virus. And I think that's why I'm afflicted by it. And I go to the doctor here and they give me some tablets and everything. And then I call my mum and I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I've had shingles. And she said that mum thing of like, oh, yeah, because you had chicken pox really bad. And then I was really pissed off. I was just like, don't just stop it. Why are you talking about me like that? And I was just, do you ever get that thing where your mum says something that you say, but when she says it? You're really annoyed. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no, okay. no. That's, that's just, just you. Um, my mum so has a great way. My mum has a great way of um, not meaning to, but making every achievement feel hollow. <laughs> oh yeah, no. My mum's good at that. Like I remember once back in the comedy days, I uh, I got a gig at the comedy store in London. You know, Ooh, I've heard a of big that. deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. Yeah, and. I called her up and I said I've got a gig at the comedy store and she just went oh isn't that that a place you don't like <laughs> <laughs> I was like no okay, I may have slagged it off but that was because they, 
they never used to book me, but now they're booking me. Oh, now, you've ruined now I it. I love them. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mum. And now she's giving you shingles. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> not. Yeah, but it is related to the herpes virus, so uh, yeah, there probably is. Only if I've been having sex in a specific line around my torso. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, shall I bore you with what I've done this last month? I never remember to ask ever. No. Ever, no. ever. I just it's not don't even... care. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it's okay if you don't care. I can tell you anyway. Um, so I've been doing a job for the Imperial War Museum. Right? Oh, nice. I love yeah. that place. Oh, that sounds fun. That's it's a really good place. Cool. Very cool. It's amazing. That's a never... good podcast, actually. You're doing a podcast for them. I'm doing a podcast for the Imperial Oh, Museum. I listened to one of their podcasts it's ages cool. ago. It was great. Conflict, got of one of... Conflict of Interest, it's called. And, is that what it's... Uh, oh, that, I was going to say oh. that's a really good title, but that is actually the title. Okay. That is the title, yeah. Conflict of Interest, uh, new series coming out. There, you, you, there are oh, other series. Oh, Conflict. Conflict, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But and it's interesting. You walk there... So, obviously, you know, dedicated to war. There's loads of World War One, World War Two, all that kind of stuff. But where we were, you, uh, this middle floor, um, and we were sort of like behind the scenes, if you like, and then we, to walk in, we went through this bit of the museum, and it's the terrorist bit, right? <gasps> And which is mad, like it just seems mad anyway. But you walk in, and there's the like I don't know what how to sort of describe it, but like you know the Lockerbie bombings, right? Yeah. It was the Have they evidence. Got that there? It's the evidence booth. So like where they sat with the screen in court, and it's got like the button that sort of says evidence, right? It's just cool. a bit weird, a bit gruesome. But then there was a Taliban motorbike, which was actually quite nice and quite cool. Um, they got a lot of money. And and a curled up, a really big, curled up ruin from the Twin Towers. Right. Wow. Yeah. And I was just going around just like, whoa, this is amazing. This is so great. But then, like, the horror of it. Like, I, oh, it yeah. just, Those I, things have seen some shit. Yeah. And I just thought, I felt, I felt, I don't know how I felt afterwards. I felt a little bit like, oh, should I... Should I enjoy looking at those things? And I, and I photographed a bullet hole in a in a, in an ambulance window. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, is did it you, weird doing that? Well, is did it... you feel an uh, did you feel a conflict of interest on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, it see. is weird though because like there's there's um not far from where I live there's a bridge that's got like metal struts and in one of the struts is a massive hole like you know a hole that's like this big like you know. Um, that's pretty big. big that is it's pretty big and it's like from a shell from like the siege of Berlin at the end of the war and it's still there because this bridge is just still standing and it's so weird when you walk past it because at one point you're like fuck that's cool and then you just kind of think oh if I were standing here on that day yeah yeah I'd well it, I mean, it's, it's the same I went to the uh, science museum in London and outside the science museum uh, one of the buildings opposite is covered in shrapnel from the blitz and they kind of left it there as a memorial and I didn't know at the time I was just walking past and went well that building's fucked and then kind of realised what it's from. <laughs> Probably but, um, needs a bit of a refit. Yeah. No, I think it's. I think it's interesting. It's good to re- good to remember the uh, the horrors of never forget. Life. Yeah, but it was. But it was more. It wasn't just remembering the horrors. It was just like going, "Whoa, oh this my god, cool. that's so cool!" <laughs> and it's like yeah. fucking. No, that's the that's towers. bang out of order. Um, <laughs> yeah, and take, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's like the equivalent of taking person. a selfie with a grave, isn't it? Like, eh. Oh Jesus! Years ago, I went to um, I went to Dallas. And I went to the uh, Dealey Plaza where JFK was shot. The and they have, a, knoll. they have a cross on the road at the exact place where he was shot. And there are a load of American tourists from somewhere else in America. We were sort of standing there going, you know, just soaking it, soaking it all in and going, hmm, yeah, okay. And these guys went to the cross and started taking selfies and going, ah! I was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. That is, that is absolutely out of order. That's what's going to happen with the with the Trump thing, isn't it? Like the Trump plinth that he yeah. was standing at. That's going to that's going to end up somewhere. Someone's probably. House. Yeah, they tape something on their ear and go, "Oh my god, I'm Trump." <sighs> anyway, we'll have that's, the Trumpers on again. That's enough from uh, us for a hot minute. Uh, we want to know what you think, so it's over to listeners' corner. <laughs> da, 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 da. Listeners', listeners corner. corner. It's da, time da, da, to da, listen da, da, to all the da, corners da, da, that you've heard of. Great, excellent. That was good. We don't, don't use music. that one. Either. Are you obtuse? Are you convex? No, what's not convex? Acute. Are you obtuse? Oh, I feel thank you. I Are you I acute? I am. I'm listening to Corners. <laughs> Isosceles. <laughs> Wait, that's a triangle. That's a triangle. Yeah. Damn it. Dorito. It was, I enjoyed how you said it, though. 
Um, Might it? Uh, we've got some lovely questions from our lovely listeners. Uh, who would like to pick one first? How about you, Terry? Um, ben Scott Green says, "Do you? Oh, he's he's a he's he's stopped his own swearing by censoring himself. So oh. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to guess the word. Do you think Norris actually shot himself when he took <laughs> the wall while leading the race?" <laughs> Oh, sorry. Shat. Do you think Norris actually shat himself when he clipped the wall while leading the race? And could the Danny Rick pivot into offering a cleaning service for sword racewear now he's unemployed? You know the old saying, where there's muck, there's brass. Is that uh, yeah, I, know that's, I know that's a saying from my granddad. Yeah. <laughs> ben Scott Green is 91 years old. Um, Imagine. No, Danny Rick won't pivot into anything Formula 1, but I think we won't see him in Formula 1 for a couple of years. He'll come back, he'll commentate on a race or something. He'll be, be selling shit. pasta sauces. He'll be, already been oh through my this. God, he'd be so bad. He'd be like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, he crashed it into oh, the yeah, wall. Man. I kind of hope he becomes, like, <laughs> just pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I think Norris shot himself? I think this is a really good question, because obviously no Formula 1 driver would ever admit to shitting themselves. Oh, of course. But I reckon... They all do it. Well, they, if uh, they need to go in the car, they're going to have to, don't they? And they piss themselves fairly regularly, I think. I think they should make it more transparent by having a transparent bum piece on their overalls. <laughs> so when they get out of the car, you can see how much... You know, they were talking about having, like, um, heart monitors in their gloves for the, on their thumbs. Yeah, yeah. Right. So right. heart monitors have... in their trousers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just now, what if it of, does? Like, if if it, you know, like sometimes, and I never know if it is what I think it is. I doubt it. Of course, it's not. Maybe oh, it's sometimes. Back in the day. I know. You're driving I think behind I know what you're going to say. Were you driving behind a national express coach? And oh some no, waters, I didn't know what you were going to say. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> some some water starts coming out of the bottom. <laughs> Can't they just like they just pipe it out basically? So if it happens, but you could use it I as a strat. I'm really sure they're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but you could use it as a strategy, right? You could just like, right, I'm going to just shit on the track on turn 10. Well, this is like back in the day. Was it the early 80s when they were doing ground effect stuff? They'd get around the various <laughs> rules by having water tanks and they'd deploy the water halfway around the track so that they wouldn't... It was something to do with breaking the ground effect or something. I can't remember the details. I love but that. But you're saying it's a similar thing. They're, like, they're trying to circumvent the weight rules by shitting themselves in the car. Not even necessarily that, but just almost like a... Mario Kart situation. So I, could try I can to see. <laughs> I can, <laughs> picking up and throwing it at people. <laughs> and then the commentators would have to add it, like, like, oh, okay, you can see on this lap that he is uh, saving up his poop <laughs> for turn one. There's where a light. Is... <laughs> There's a light on the back. It's the brown and light. And the uh, graphic comes yeah. up saying, "AWS, we have been monitoring what the drivers have eaten, <laughs> yeah. and we think he has seventy-six mils of poop left." <laughs> He's engaged his poop production system. The PRS. Uh, PRS is engaged. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, McLaren has a flexible, <laughs> a flexible poop. <laughs> <laughs> We're just oh, going to be an aerodynamic park though. called the Poop Scoop, isn't there? Um, oh. d- do they actually shit themselves driving? Is this a... Is, they, do they? I think they wouldn't. I mean, if you need to go, you're not going to pit and run to the bathroom, it's are so you? so uncomfortable, though. Them, uh, statistically, it must have happened. I think if you're... Uh, shit. I think if you're, you know, batting around Singapore and losing loads of weight and feeling like absolute death, like a lot of them were, shitting yourself is probably the least of your worries. Mm. Oh, but imagine them sliding around in the car. Oh. Oh, and you get and out the G-forces would spread it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the G-forces so would push it back and it'd up. be perfectly formed because you know the seats are like molded to their bodies. It would like, oh, mm, it would not. It'd be like it'd be like when you. I mean, for all the parents out there will know what happens if I talk about a punami mm. um, when you have a baby and it shits itself and it somehow comes out their collar. <laughs> it would be like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they're really little, Ooh. that's mad. It's like how how did you even do that? <laughs> it does right. defies uh, physics. How old's your kid? Phil? Now, uh, yeah. coming up to five, so she doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, so my, mine's th- coming up to be three in November. And I cannot believe, right, because she's potty trained now, I cannot believe the size of the shits that come out. I, honestly, it's actually <laughs> frightening, know, yeah. though. Get, as soon as they start eating food, it's proper adult sized. But, uh, yes! Like, it's not like it works its way up. <laughs> Terry's like, why the fuck are we talking about toddler shit? <laughs> so, I have a cat. Yeah. Does reasonably cat sized shit? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was supposed to join in. <laughs> in a tray of gravel. Yeah. Sometimes Which is exactly not. the same as uh, where I make my daughter yeah. do it, yeah. 
What was the question? We also we have a three. Uh, it's about cat. Norris. Yeah. So we've, t- okay. No, we've got two cats, and oh, one's got another got three, one. One's got three legs, and the front leg is missing. How does he smell? <laughs> but the front leg is missing, and so <laughs> what happened, Ollie? Is the way he said "missing" was like we're looking for it instead of where it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was bored without it, you know. Oh, right, and, um, okay, yeah. She never had little, it, so it's not missing. It's just. But there's a little there. stump. That, there's a little stump there where it like obviously didn't grow properly or something. But sometimes she's in the litter tray and she's I'm on sorry. the wrong. She's on the wrong leg, and you just see her like trying to put the litter over with a missing arm. It's the most beautiful thing. <laughs> oh, it's cute. You just it's see this cute. little stump going. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Good. Oh. So Lando Norris. <laughs> yeah, did he shit himself? I did. Well, I, we Maybe. should probably talk about that because for, for no, what, what was talk, quite an impressive. I feel like victory. we're going quite long. Okay. <laughs> Very well, quickly, he clipped, then. We, we, he, he almost Norris. He, he finished. There was he, a so. couple of occasions where he very nearly completely fucked it yeah. up. Like I, within millimeters of like absolutely Russia 2019 or whatever it was. I mean that no, that as my John race back. was fucking phenomenal. Because it was a good one. Yeah, Yeah. Not just because the race was good, but it was good because the whole build-up was like, okay, well, Piastri has decided that if he has to, um, you know, um, move over, he will, you know, reluctantly because he's a team player, papaya rules and all that. And then fucking Norris fucks up qualifying. <laughs> And he's at the back whilst Piastri's just sailing off into the sunset. And I'm like, I fucking love Piastri. <laughs> <laughs> but then Norris, Norris brought it back again. Oh, he did. Man. He won by like... By, by Verstappen, Verstappen-like. Verstappen-esque it was. Yeah. It was who was second? Verstappen. Yeah. So he's not going to win the championship. Well, yeah. I th- was it, what's the stats? Um, I th- it's something like if Norris wins everything and Verstappen's second... Were it not for Daniel Ricciardo's fastest lap, they would have been equal on points by the end of the last race. But then Ricciardo fucked it up by getting his fastest lap, but I'm sure we'll talk and about that later There you go on. and spoil it all by changing foot tyres and doing a fastest lap. Terry, do you want to pick a que- you've picked a question. You've already picked, picked that one. one. Phil, do you want to pick a question? Um, Dan Greenbeef oh, says... I wanted to go for that one just because of his name. It's the only reason I haven't actually read the question. But anyway, go on. Dan Greenbeef says, chat about Red Bull finally realising Danny Rick's been shit for the last five years. Not a question, but fine, we will. To which Joshua Jake Stewart adds, but not yet realising the same about Perez. There has been a certain divergence of method from Red Bull in figuring out which driver to get rid of Mm. and when and why. And Jesus Christ, they're shit at this. Well, doesn't it seem to be... No other team does this, apart from Williams. Doesn't (laughs) it seem to be... That it's it's all politics. So Daniel Ricciardo is supported by Christian Horner and his clammy, blurry cock. <laughs> and Helmut Marko wanted to get rid of Ricciardo, but in a kind of power play, Ricciardo's wanted to be Horner's wanted to keep Ricciardo, but Horner's um, standing has obviously fallen quite dramatically this year. And it feels like Ricciardo finally going is almost the admission, the tacit admission that Horner has lost power in the Red Bull organization. Is Possibly. But, but also, he shit. But I mean, it's always... Has he ever had that? I mean, we, I remember we were saying this fucking years ago. I was like, does Christian Horner really have that much power? Because we were making jokes. Like, before Dietrich, Mach- Dietrich Mateschitz died, we were saying that Horner basically is just a kind of mouthpiece. You remember when there was the whole multi-21 thing? And Weber and Vettel were, uh, were at their throats, for at each other's throats for months. And... Horner basically did, couldn't do anything about it. It was just like, oh, guys, please don't fight. Come on, I love you. And we sort of made the joke then that he was basically just, you know, Dietrich Matuschitz was calling all the shots. But and that Horner was just there to be a sort of a puppet. And I wonder but, if much has really changed because I think that, you know, okay, he's maybe a bit more powerful now, but it seems to be Horner, that's, um, it seems to be uh, Helmut Marko that's caused, uh, calling a lot of the shots. Yes, but also what, looking back on it, wasn't that just... Him supporting Vettel and saying to Rick, saying to Weber, "Oh yeah." Well, no, it was it was him not having any kind of executive power to tell his drivers to stop squabbling. He just had to. Oh, please. So don't. you think this has been going on for some time then? Like, I just in, think I don't also, think he's got that thing. much oomph generally. He's probably well, got more now than he used to, but I, I just well, don't I was going to say that powerful as a t- as team principles go. Well, there's obviously there, there was a sort of there was a turning point 
when he all the cock pictures came out. Like I mean, and, yeah. and that and it's easy to see how that could shift it because it's like, yeah, but you sent dick pics to your secretary, so fuck I mean, you. I'm not he was to he you. was pretty imperious on the most dominant car with Adrian Newey and Max Verstappen. He'd built the best team, the most dominant. You know, this the start of this year, Horner was untouchable. Apart, well, somebody by secretary, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now not so. But also, don't forget, Marco was it Marco the one that brought in Nick De Vries? Yes. So After his, seeing him for one race and deciding that that was worth a full year's contract, so his standing is gone. New is gone. It's just it's a mess. But um, I think I think Danny well, Rick's been well, Danny Rick's the been only one that's like gone a, as well. Yeah, but Danny Rick's been used like a kind of pawn in the uh, the grander argument, I think. And I think actually to put him out of his misery, Danny Rick's career should have ended a couple of years ago. No, it's, and we've been saying it for years. Yeah. Like he should have gone ages ago, but he didn't, and since then he has been. For all our mocking of him, he has been treated quite badly. But also, he's thick as pig shit, so it's fine, <laughs> and it's pretty funny. But no, I mean Red, Red Bull, Red Bull have got problems. I think it's fairly clear to see because it's not just it's not just Newey and Ricardo. You know those two great titans of uh, Formula One that have gone. Um, it's there's quite a lot of staff leaving Milton Keynes at quite a rate of knots mm. it would seem I keep seeing every now and again stories about random relatively senior engineers or senior managers or something like that heading off to other teams there appears well, to be a bit of a talent drain going on there so that's got to cause some problems oh yeah I think Red Bull will be back in the midfield in a couple of years mm. safely that should be could your we get take the, could we go back to the early days of when uh, the they junior were team were better because <laughs> Toro Rosso won a race before Red Bull did this is true could we go back to that? That would be great. We can try it. Next question. Charles Moussard. Uh, would you say Moussard or Moussard or Moussard? Oh. I can't hear you, Phil. I think, uh, I think I would say Moussard. He's been writing in for years. Thank you, Charles. And oh. I, we've never thought to ask how you pronounce your name. But I would say Moussard. Moussard. But I could be entirely wrong. Hi, Charles. Sorry. Uh, how many more ways can Mercedes wind Lewis up before he leaves? So many more. Oh, there's loads. They they could put buckets of waters on on top of doors. Cling film over the cockpit. Oh, <laughs> brilliant! Cling film around turn three. <laughs> Cling film in the pit area. So when he comes in, he's <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> No cheese wire. <laughs> oh, oh, well, 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 a little bit brutal. Okay, <laughs> Terry, you've taken it too far. I just called you. Phil it's again. just a before. prank. <laughs> <laughs> Me neck. We're going to start happy slapping him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they yeah, uh, no, a, a lot. Clear more. window in, in the bottom part of his trousers. But the thing is, when he left, for, when he signed for Ferrari, he knows that he's going to a get excluded from all the juicy stuff, all the gossip, <laughs> and he's also going to basically they're, they're going to favour George Russell. Which <laughs> the only thing I take from that is that you know that everyone at Mercedes doesn't want to favour George Russell. They just feel they have to. <laughs> no, that's why they're getting a new hotshot in, so they can get rid of him to Red Bull, apparently. Oh, that George Russell. That's another thing that m- might be happening. I know, George Russell is so fucked. <laughs> and who is it? Who, anymore. who are they getting in again? Should I know this? Antonelli. Uh, Kimi Antonelli. Oh, that's it, Antonelli. confirmed yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, it was to, Antonelli, take, it? to take the other seat. And, okay, for the first year, maybe two years, he's going to be the junior because he's getting used to it, but... At least if you believe everything Toto Wolf says, it, like Antonelli is really, really good. No, I think he's going to be like Alonso in Hamilton at... Uh, oh, in 2007? Yeah. yeah. I think what's going to happen is Russell is going to be made to look pretty shit next year. But that I, for one, I'm looking forward to a massive falling out between them. Because oh, Russell yeah. can be pretty chippy. I don't know enough about Antonelli to know about his character. You can just tell by his name, can't you, that he's going to yeah. be... An arrogant fuck, <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I really like. I think it'd be I'm fine. hoping he's going to be like I'm going to be like his namesake. Like he's going to be like Kimi Raikkonen. That'd be pretty mm. good. Mm. Um, cool. Cool, cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. But better. Will Lewis care though? I, will he be wound uh, no, up? No, he's, he's looking forward to going to Ferrari. I think, I think so. He's going to enjoy the parties. Wait. Oh, and... I'm so excited for next year. It's going to be great, isn't it? It's, I think 26 is going to be the one where Lewis has got his, his proper his feet under the counter at Ferrari. Newey's finally getting the Aston Martin working, but then probably were realising that he has to work with 52-year-old Fernando Alonso, who's annoyed everybody else in the team. I met Winston Churchill, you'll say. 
Is that your Alonso impression? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it was very good. <laughs> Hi, what, everyone. <laughs> you'll get, you're going to hear a better word in a minute. Right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Looking forward to it. Um, all right. Uh, next question, Terry. Mr. Anderson says, probably need to mention <laughs> Cola Pinto. He's been pretty good. Also, next year, there's going to be four Brits on the grid. thought this was a world championship and not the BTCC. Before any so, of you yeah. answer that question. Sorry, sorry. What, was his, what was his first name? Yes, his first name, Terry, please. <laughs> Mr. No. That doesn't look like it's what it says here. You've just given up on even trying to pronounce that name. Because do you know what? Do you know what? All right, I'm going to talk about podcasts for a fucking second here. If there's one thing I've learned to hate about fucking podcasts in the last 10 years or so, is that everybody goes, oh, I'm going to pronounce the name. Oh, sorry, I don't think I got that right. (laughs) And it's just boring. Don't pronounce the name. I literally did it five minutes ago. <laughs> I know, I know. You both do it. Everyone does it. Everyone except me in the podcasting world does it. I just, refuse. To, just uh, say the fucking name. Don't you? Don't have to say you pronounced it incorrectly. Just say it. Evind. I think that's probably pretty close. E- Evind. Evind. Edgevind. E- edge. It could be Edgevind. <laughs> you might be practicing as it is actually how you pronounce it. I'm so sorry, Mr. Anderson. No, don't be sorry. I, don't I be sorry. I apologise for how we pronounced your name. I do not apologise. <laughs> I do not apologise. I tried my Mr. Anderson from the Matrix. Mr. Anderson. Um, Colapinto. (laughs) Colapinto. He's fucking great, isn't he? He has been good. He has. Because I've been so fucking busy lately, I haven't really seen many of the interviews before or after the race. Has anyone seen him speak and interviewed? How does he come across? He's quite cocky and I like him. In a good way? I haven't seen him. Not really. Kind of ish. I don't know. I can't tell. He's kind of... He Terry knows Smith. he's good. <laughs> he's, no, he's like he knows he's good. But, uh, I mean, he's been good in F one. He hasn't been that great in F two. Like, it's not yeah, bad. When, but when not, it matters, not. when it matters, right. we're, <laughs> he's we're just so, phoning it in an F two. We're so sick of like going. Oh well, there's got a chance in one race, but there's not much you can do in one race in Formula One. So actually, we won't expect much. And then is he's that, is that go, your Nick DeVries impression? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then he's like, "I'm driving a Williams. I scored points on my first race. Turns out it's a piece of piss." <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, bitches! This car's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this Albon is shit. <laughs> well, is Albon does car? seem to be. Albon's been getting a lot of uh, a, lot, a bit more snarky of late, hasn't he? I think he's feeling the feeling the heat. Yeah, from Colapinto. No, he's good. I mean, we mocked him for having a um, beverage and unit of measurement name, but he, he does seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah. The thing is, for Albon, do you reckon he's just been like, yeah, do you know what? I've got a seat, I'm driving a car, I'm next to Sergeant, he's shit, so I'm always going to look better than him. I'm just going to chill out for a bit. But now, well, now he's got yeah. some fire up his ass, hasn't he? He's, uh, he's, he's got, got Carlos Sainz coming in next year, who's going to be in a really bad mood that, all year. <laughs> I, am, I am looking forward to that. Like, even if the Williams isn't very good next year, I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing, like, how, how good is Albon? Because we know pretty much how good Carlos Sainz is, which is not quite as good as Leclerc, but still pretty good. But psychologically, um, how good will Sainz be next year? Because going from Ferrari to Williams, you're, 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 it, he'll do all the talk of uh, building the team back up to its glory days, etc. But when he starts the Australian Grand Prix, like 19th, <laughs> he'll be like going, ah, oh, that's almost a separate thing. Like, here. Williams are on the up, you know, they've got money, they've got decent people. But it, we only ever saw Albon against anyone decent when he was Max Verstappen's teammate and he was kind of parachuted in there. And wasn't up to it. It was like early days, and he got his ass handed to him. But now he's had a lot more practice, and I'm intrigued to see how good he is, or isn't. And then, then we'll find out maybe how good Colapinto is, because obviously Colapinto at the moment doesn't have a seat for next year. No. But you think you'd think with the way that he's, I mean, essentially he's got what Liam Lawson is getting, which is you know uh, the rest of the season trial. Yeah. So, and I'd say so far, Carlo Pinto has done very well and, and maybe well, putting him... I don't know where he's going to end up. Sauber, maybe? Well, Sauber, because Bottas was... A, I think, but from what I've heard, Bottas was about to sign for Sauber and they've kind of gone, all right, Man, we'll keep no, just and one. And they've gone, well, da, 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 Just da, da. one more and thing. And he's trying to grab the pen, going, give me the fucking <laughs> I'll pen. sign it. I'll sign it right now. <laughs> I'll do all the adverts you want. I'll cut my hair. I'll do anything. I won't, wear, I won't ever wear clothes. <laughs> Uh, we got yeah. one more. Que- we got we got one more question. Thanks. Uh, thanks for. Well, that. there was another question as part of Mr. Anderson's question, which we haven't addressed at all. Uh, oh right, yeah, four Brits on the grid. Thought, uh, thought, yeah, Tim okay. Henman, uh, Nick Murray, Andy, Nick Andy Murray, Murray and yeah. Joel Craven. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, Hugh Hugh Edwards. Uh, no, he's well. <laughs> oh no, they Welsh are British. British. Oh shit! I've offended the Welsh and. and yeah. And also, he just picked a paedophile. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Is he one? Can I say that? I don't know. I mean. 
I think no, legally, I'll probably, probably just get, get that. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, go on, Phil. All right, Nick Peppel says, mm. uh, now that Newey has been announced to Aston Martin, how will Fernando manage to lose his job right before they win nine consecutive championships? Can I answer this one? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes. So we had a, I had a very rare moment of regret from the last podcast, Uh-oh. which is normally... You know, if I think of a joke after the podcast, I'm like, oh, that's fine. But I made a little off-the-cuff joke on the last podcast. And when I listened to it back, I thought of a much bigger joke. So I would like now to do that joke. But I would need both of your help. Because if you scroll to the very bottom of the script, oh, yeah. you will find I've written a play for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Scene three. What the I'm going to have to pause because I've just spilled beer everywhere. But in about 30 seconds, I'll be right on this. <laughs> All right. Let me go grab a beer as well. Oh, I will as well. Right. Talk so what's happening this, here? Talk us so, through this play. I've written a play called Weekend at Furnace. <laughs> Weekend at Furnace. <laughs> Weekend, Weekend at Furnace. At Furnace. Okay. <laughs> Is this like, are you, are you the new Ernie Wise? Little, yeah. Little, I've written a little up-to-date I've reference play. Okay, play what so. I wrote. <laughs> So, Ollie, you're reading the narration, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay. Terry, that's me, I'm Alonso. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Phil, you're Big Daddy Stroll. Thanks, right. Oh, in the play, yeah. In the play. Ollie, you're Little Stroll. Of course. And Phil, (laughs) you're also the part of the junior designer. Okay. Okay, let's go. Scene one. Okay, here we go. We are at the Bahrain International Circuit. Testing for the 2025 F1 season is about to begin. Fernando Alonso is waiting by the red light impatiently come on a green light <laughs> shine on my green team and my third championship winning year Lawrence Stroll comes over with Lance in his shirt pocket <laughs> hi Fernie you excited I am a place I'm so excited this is my year I will finally avenge Lewis of the Hamiltons <laughs> Go get Adrian Newey, our star designer. It's nearly time. He's not here because of the money. It's because he likes me. I love love the little stroll sounds like Frank Spencer. (laughs) (laughs) This is him in the pocket. I love it. (laughs) Alonso is at Adrian Newey's camper van. (laughs) Adrian! Adrian! It's time to start a a Newey season! (laughs) He laughs to himself at his own joke. He, la- he laughs to himself at his own joke as he knocks on the door. Adrian? He pulls the door from its hinges because he's g- g- good at that, but he knew he's dead on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to die. No, wait. Okay. But, and I've got to be clear. He put that. He pulls the door from its hinges because he's good at that, but sees Newey dead on the floor. My championship hopes! No! <laughs> Lawrence Stroll comes running over. <laughs> What's going on? He's screaming because he knows I'll beat him. Shut up, you little prick! Yes, sir. Adrian, he dead! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I have all this money, and yet right now I don't know what to do. What would Tommy Hilfiger do in this situation? He'd get all close to Lewis Hamilton's tight body. What? What? Wait, (laughs) I have an idea. (laughs) The the test is underway. Alonso and Newey are in the garage looking at the car. Only Newey is rather slumped over it. A junior designer approaches. Uh, Is he okay? Uh, this is how it works, okay, fuck pig? You, <laughs> you leave him alone. He has to get close to the car to see the data. <laughs> Alonso lifts Newey's head up to look at the designer and he puts his hands on his mouth and forces it open and close. <laughs> you're fired. You're fired. See, he said you're fired. <laughs> oh, I just need him to look at this part I've designed. He's busy. <laughs> but, but he told me it was important. When? A couple of hours ago. <gasps> Did he speak of me? What? What was his last word? Was it about the great Fernando Alonso? Uh, I'll just have to show him this. The designer forces the clipboard under Newey's face. Adrian's arm slips and scrawls an ugly squiggle on the page. But Adrian has spoken. Go! But, but just go and make that part or you'll be fired. It's just a squiggle. 
Do you... D- ha, do you dare doubt Nui? He is a design genius. Everything he touches turns to gold. In fact, still, everything he touches will make me a champion. Boy, make that part or you are fired. <laughs> it's the Australian Grand Prix starting grid. All the drivers are lined up, but the two Aston Martins are at the back. Both of their cars having an extra large carbon fibre squiggle on their cars. <laughs> there's, 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 there's ruined their aerodynamics. <laughs> cut, cut to Alonso in the car. Oh, uh, this was supposed to be my year. <laughs> What? Mika Hakkinen? <laughs> oh, sorry. The, oh, is that where the script I ends? It just says Mika Hakkinen. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be like a fancy film. You know, at the end, it just says Finn. <laughs> Fan. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yes. Oh. oh. Once you explain a joke, it's always it's better. It's always oh. the best. Welcome back. Hope you got sold something absolutely lovely. Um, I bought some crypto. <laughs> What's the crypto? I wonder if there was a crypto ad in there. If you bought some crypto in the ad, great. Oh, all goes into the coffers. crypto. Um, <laughs> so, Phil, Terry, uh, what, what, what? I bought, I bought a pint of crypto. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. No, <laughs> Sorry. No. Oh, no, it's okay. It's totally allowed. Phil, Terry, let's do some news. All right. I mean, a lot of the news we've already talked about because we're that organised. <laughs> Um, but I'd like to talk in, in all the Ricardo shenanigans. We should probably talk about Liam Lawson, who we have been saying for a good year or so since it was since he had his three or four races that he should be coming back. Now he's coming back. He's got he's well he's got a contract to the end of the year. He doesn't at the moment have a contract for next year at either Toro Rosso, whatever it's called now, V Carb Carb RB. What are we calling it? I don't know. Whatever it's called, mm. he doesn't have a contract for next year at the moment. But is he? in effect doing an audition for the seat at RB next year or is he in effect doing an audition for the seat at Red Bull next year amid amid rumours completely unsubstantiated ones that Perez might be out before the end of the year as well mm. well they should get rid of Perez yeah, I mean they, yeah we, they should have got rid of him in the summer but yes I mean it's weird isn't it because it's like I can't think of a parallel in Formula 1 where there's a team that I mean, they're not as dominant now, but let's say that the first half of this season, they were walking every... Yeah, they're they still were, winning the championship. And they're still winning the championship, and Max Verstappen's very likely to win. And yet, there's this shit show <laughs> for the second... It's just the absolute It's comically shit show. poor. It's so bad. Mm. And surely... And also, the fact that Max Verstappen's so good, because normally you'd think, you know, like when uh, Nico Rosberg quit uh, at the end of the year from Mercedes it's like oh my god there's a fucking there's a drive going in the second Mercedes yeah I'll be against Lewis Hamilton but fucking hell I'll be in a Mercedes and this one everyone's going nah <laughs> I think I'd rather have the RB seat actually if that's yeah right. I think I'd rather go I think to I'd rather uh, go Williams to Sa- I'd rather go to Sauber <laughs> yeah um, yeah it is I mean well this is there like I, th- I think we may have said this already but I think we're seeing the start of the downfall of Red Bull at least for a while yeah. because it seems that the, the the crucial thing that was holding them together was, was Adrian Newey and Max Verstappen, and to a certain extent Dietrich Mateschitz, because it's when he died that this all really started going to shit. With the uh, you know the the fight for the power vacuum within Red Bull, the global I know, but organization, grief, and now grief it's makes all... Horner really horny. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems, but it does seem like it's all going to shit now, um, and. Do you remember there was a dis- there was a concerted effort for a little bit to try and separate out from Red Bull? Like the messaging was like, no, we are a separate team from RB. Mm. And now yeah. it's just like, I mean, well, maybe we'll put them in RB. We'll put, I don't know. It's just it was one of our four seats, you know, in uh, in our four cars that we well, have even, at Red Bull. Even the Daniel Ricciardo getting the fastest lap on his last race was a bit like take make sure that Norris doesn't get it. Not that we're working with Red Bull or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, oh, all right. It's all just like, and again, it makes a uh, it makes another mockery of the Red Bull driver program because who the hell's in that? I don't even know. Um, Me, I'm fucking in it. <laughs> you might as well be. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't even apply. I just got a letter at the post. 
It's like jury duty. So it, it could well be that come January, or whenever they announce their drivers, so just before the first race probably, it could be that Liam Lawson is racing at what until recently was the best seat in F1. It could be that he's at uh -oh. Toro Rosso, whatever the fuck they call now. Or it could be that he doesn't have a drive at all. Likewise, Colapinto. Maybe they'll just sign Colapinto. I don't know. I'd but like it's, Maybe weird. Max Verstappen will go to Mercedes and they'll sign George Russell and Franco Colapinto. What is good, what is exciting is that there is going to be a real mix up next year, isn't there? And we're going to get. It's going to be so weird. Yeah, and the chunk of new drivers, old drivers in new places. I think I, I'm trying to remember when that sort of last happened at that. Uh, probably the scale. anti this year wasn't it because this was the first year where there were no driver changes at least at the start of the year since then there's been loads yeah but I do think this is going to be one of the weirdest ones In to me this is going back to kind of Ayrton Senna not being in a McLaren you know with Lewis Hamilton being in a Ferrari Carlos Sainz at Williams all this kind of stuff well, it's like when Vettel went to Ferrari that was weird yeah and don't forget the first race of the season next year is the Australian Grand Prix again so we have to wake mm -hmm. up at four in the morning so you're oh. tired as well. So you're you're watching it going. This isn't right. <laughs> That's it. Lewis Hamilton's not in the red car. <laughs> well, it also seems like there, there's been a realization this year that that the teams are suddenly going. Hang on, some of the, we don't just have to keep recycling the same old drivers. We don't have to get Nico Hulkenberg in for the another. Although they have got Nico Hulkenberg, in <laughs> but like we, you know, we it's, we're not going to sign Nick Heidfeld to the other Sauber seat. Um, what like I think the, Cal Cal Pinto's come in and done well. Lawson came in at the end of last year, done well. Nick De Friesen came in, uh, came in and didn't do that well, but or did well enough to get himself a seat and then was shit. Um, Oli Behrman's done really well and managed to get him seats. Like there seems to be like, oh, maybe maybe we could get young drivers instead of the same old tired hacks that have done three hundred races and never won anything. Well, this is this is a very interesting point, I think, because it's like it's a long it's a long story in Formula One because when they stopped doing unlimited testing, it was suddenly the prevailing oh, yeah. narrative was we must oh, have experience. Yeah, we can, we can't have these people come in. But now that simulators and everything are so fucking advanced and they're all doing races and all the rest of it, that actually. That young hunger seems to be now. It's younger. It's, there's there's an inflection point where the hunger of a younger driver is now more important or more valuable than experience of an older driver. Obviously, your Hamilton and your Verstappen's transcend that, but I think, on the whole, and also they're cheaper. So why the f you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, it's like the uh, Ricardo made an absolute fortune from being exactly. Rubbish. It's like the army realizing that actually some of the best drone pilots aren't actually pilots, but kids that be playing computer games. So you know, it's, it's that like kind of that. thing. Isn't it? It is like same, that. Same it's thing. exactly it's the exactly same. It's exactly the same thing. That's why Daniel Ricciardo will be deployed to uh, Afghanistan. It's identical. Yeah, no, he won't. He's too shit. Mm. Um, mm. Cool. What else? Was, was that Did some insight? Did we do some insight? I think, I think so. we gave some insight. I, well, I, I think can, that was I insightful. Can, I can ruin that now. Good. Oh, good. Okay, yep. Yeah. Michael Schumacher has been seen in public. No, God, where's this going? No, this is, right, this is actually a genuine On the Daily, Daily Star? Weirdly, I read it on the Manchester <laughs> Evening News. It came up on like my feed. Yeah, I know stuff. that. That's, that is clearly bullshit. Well, well no, no, uh, no they're, they're, yeah, I know the story, but yeah, the story is actually kind of interesting. In <laughs> that, there's been a family wedding in some villa that the Schumachers own, and it was, his, Mike, it was his daughter, wasn't it? It was his daughter. Okay, and his, his Michael Schumacher was flown over, in whatever state he's in, and. They made everyone take their phones away so there's no pictures or anything. And like apparent I didn't know this until I read the article. Like apparently Ralph Schumacher has been uh ostracized from the, the, the small, close knit group of carers and stuff. So like Well that that happened while Michael's still fine, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know. But what what was weird about it was I read I and I think I wanna I don't want to talk about Michael Schumacher right now or make any uncouth jokes. That's not like me. But I wanna talk about me. <laughs> My favourite <laughs> subject. Because I read, I saw this headline and I went, oh God, that's disgusting. This tabloid shitty fucking crap that we have to put up with. On the, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, of course I'll click on it. And then <laughs> click on it. And at the top, there's a picture of Michael Schumacher in his prime. And I realized subconsciously, I didn't do it on purpose. I scrolled down the article first to see if there was a picture of him before I read the words. Yeah. And I was like, I hate myself. But also quite disappointed there's no pictures. I mean, uh, somebody will have to sneak to one, surely. They'll try to sell it to the sun and they'll be outraged, or somebody will do an AI version. Or, but then, oh, that's already been you, done, the AI one, isn't it? Yeah. 
I'd forgotten about that until I read this article because then I was doing some googling for a picture from the wedding and um, <laughs> couldn't find any. But I forgot about this whole the German magazine that did the AI. Oh article. yeah, it was a German mag, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, the editor had to resign. It was like it was quite a big deal here. <laughs> Just I'd just like to um, openly admit that I've spent the whole of this conversation trying to look for a picture of Michael Schumacher. I know there aren't any. It's like they've done really well. They've done really well. I'm going to Fetch. go ahead and say he probably doesn't look as good as he used to. No, but, but they need I, they, whoever wants to get out of the public eye needs just his team, right? Because <laughs> he's the, you're Philip right. Schofield. <laughs> he's going on TV. He's going on fucking TV. Oh, I know. Oh, dear. I don't want to talk about him. Fuck him. Uh, don't. Don't. Don't yeah, that, well, that was the problem that somebody else made, and it caused yes. all sorts of bother. Don't oh. fuck Philip Schofield. Um, anyway, back to Michael Schumacher. Yes, there are <laughs> no pictures. <laughs> back in 2008, I did an Edinburgh show where I slagged off Philip Schofield because I thought he was the most clean-cut celebrity. And it's funny to kind of be uh, slightly vindicated 12 years on. <laughs> did you that get one? booed at You the weren't time. vindicated. You were, entirely, you were entirely wrong. He wasn't the most clean-cut celebrity. He was the exact opposite. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been made to look like a fool, Terry. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your carefully cultured veneer of uh, whatever it is you've Shit. got going on has been shifted. Anyway. So, uh, dirty, dirty tabloid Michael Schumacher. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. If I'm happy he got to go to his daughter's wedding. He's, I mean, you know, he clearly is well enough to be able to be moved, which is great. Good luck to him. And good luck to his daughter, whose name we all know. Just Michaela. Quite, quite yeah, I pat- hope it's Michaela, quite, that'd be great. A, a patronising good luck. It's like, yeah, good luck to him. Good luck no, to him. I, you know. He doesn't need luck. He's fucking he's, minted. All right, fine. I mean, he, he's, he's had his run of bad luck, so... And now it's time for the State of F1 with Terry Saunders. When I was young, I used to love Choose Your Own Adventure books. Wait, how can I describe one of these to our younger listeners? Um, well... It was basically a book that, um, hmm. okay, a book is like where your parents print a boarding pass, <laughs> and, um, and Choose Your Own Adventure was a book that you could literally choose different options at the end of each chapter, and then go to the corresponding page. You're in control of the narrative, albeit in very strict guardrails. Oh wait, it's a computer game. It's like a fucking computer game. Choose Your Own Adventure was an early computer game. Anyway, I used to love at the end of a quote adventure to deconstruct all of the potential paths to get to the end. And let's cut to the chase. This is exactly what I've just done with Ricardo's career. So which ending are we at? And to be honest, if we start the story from his peak of Red Bull, every choice or page turn, I believe, has led to an adventure that sees him sliding down the grid and retiring an unhappy man with a lot of money. But don't worry, I have an adventure. Ooh. Option one, do you decide to stay at Red Bull, go to page 26? Now, if he'd have done this, he'd have been constantly trying to find Verstappen until he couldn't take it anymore, which is basically what happened anyway, but somehow we all think he should have enjoyed another year or so of being made to look shit. Option two, do you want to stay on at Alpine or Renault or whatever, go to page 43? He was doing good at Renault, and then there's a slight argument that him deciding to fuck them over for a shot at McLaren sort of destroyed the morale in that team, and it's been a sliding prospect ever since. But really, long-term at Renault would have got him at best into a midfield fight before they'd ever be fuck off. Option three. Do you want to be less shit at McLaren? (laughs) Go to page 52. This one is broadly academic because he was shit at McLaren. In part... In part because the car was weird, but mainly because he was more of a kind of last rule set driver. Something about front ends and late braking. He had his window and he broke it. But there is a prancing horse in the room. With an Italian name and facial hair, he was a shoe in to be a disappointing Ferrari driver and was linked to the team at least twice. So if you want to lie awake at night wondering what could have been, Daniel, go to page 103. (laughs) We're not going to find out. I want. To, I well, gen, now I'm genuinely thinking: Is there a scenario where they get Danny Ricciardo in at Ferrari? No, there isn't. No, but I do. I think it's. A, I mean, I do think after Red Bull, every option for him ends up in the same place. Hmm. I mean, the, ultimately, the trouble is he was really good at one particular little window of car, and now isn't. Yeah, and c- can't drive anything and that's else. It. But you know, he's probably made 150 million quid out of it. And now he can go and do whatever the hell he likes. So past the sources. I think he'd go to NASCAR. I think he'd fit in quite well there. He's been yeah. itching to have a fight with somebody. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. They seem to like that at NASCAR. Be good. All right, you cobat. Yes. 
That's what he'd say. <laughs> so, tell us how wrong we are. Uh, you can do so via social media. We're at for F1 sake on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And we're still on Facebook if anybody checks it these days. You can email us wrong at ff1s.com. Terry is thirsty, so you can buy us a pint. Uh, if you want to just say no. thanks or whatever, uh, you can do that. You can donate a one off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. It's time for the man of the month of driving. Oscar Piastri. Oscar Bianco Piastri. Franco Colapinto. Oh. Do you know what I was going to say Colapinto? Oh, no, don't talk about we it. We don't discuss it. Fuck. That's it from us. We'll be back next month for another roundup of F1 nonsense. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Dromans. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about the fact that Renault, or Alpine, you know, the factory Renault team, oh, yeah. have decided that they're not going to use Renault engines anymore and that Renault engines are probably not going to happen anymore because what the fuck is going on at Renault Alpine? I don't know. And to Terry Saunders. We haven't had time to scroll through the uh, Formula One websites to see what I've not spoken about. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> we now have a month to figure out something and we still can't do it. I'll tell you what, even though I know we do, we've done this podcast like nine years now, right? And there's nothing, there's still, there's a moment, it's like, it's like Sunday night before going to bed, before we got scored it, like last of the summer wine's on, you're slightly freaking out because the weekend's over. Last and suddenly of you remember, the summer wine, yeah. And suddenly you remember there's like homework to do and you freak out. And that's exactly what, so whenever Phil's doing his, we haven't got time to talk about, I have this like, this like teenage panic. <laughs> I'm just like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. And you always say, we haven't had time to talk about uh, Formula One collecting cookies. Do you accept or <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for F1's sake, and follow us on Twitter. I've said all this shit. At for F1's sake. Oh, and you can check us on YouTube channel, where you can see as well as hear us. If you're watching YouTube already, here's something just for you. Look at that. Amazing. However, if you want to watch or listen, just type in for F1's sake. Don't type that. Don't type that bit. <laughs> don't type that bit just type in for f1 sake to anything something and see what comes up we're fucking everywhere now yeah typewriter whatever terry where can people buy merch f f <laughs> I, we sound like danny ricardo we've just given up <laughs> we have just given up ff1s.com forward slash shop shop oh we're the fastest lap there at the end yeah there we are <laughs> Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Pitt. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.